Corinthians 126. I got I to gotta give you something. It's really important. For you see your calling. For you see your calling. Do we have that one? Go ahead. I'll wait on you. 1 Corinthians 1 26. For you see your calling, brother, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. 27 says, God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. Somebody say amen. I hope you get this. I want it to change your life the way it did mine. So I say this with all humility, y'all. With all humility, I am honored that God chose me to do something for him. I have my papers backwards. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just hear flying back through where I, What's he doing? Okay, we'll start back where you was at. First Peter 2, 9, please. <laughs> I say this with all humility, not being cocky. I can't tell you how honored I am to be chosen. Somebody say chosen. And don't worry, many of you were too. Chosen means having been selected as the best or most appropriate. That's what chosen means. Having been selected as the best or most appropriate. You know, Mark back there drives an 18-wheeler, and he's done it all of his life. I drove some, but I probably can't drive as good as he does because I've been out of it for a while. And if I needed to know something about driving an 18-wheeler, I'd ask Mark about it. I'd say, explain to me how you don't grind in gears, 13-speed Road Ranger. And I told you if I needed help with drywall, I'd ask Mike because that's what Mike's done all of his life. My cousin Mark, too, knows a lot about guns. If I needed to know something about a gun, you know, how to fix it or something's wrong with it. So... I understand that each one of us have something and you're chosen in that area. You're chosen in a certain area. You're really good at some things and that help you find your place. So in school, when they were choosing team members and you always prayed that you wouldn't be the last to get chosen. Oh, I'll take him. I'll take him. You stand up thinking, oh God. The root word is choose. So somewhere in your creation, y'all, God said, I choose her. I chose him. What an honor. Somebody say, what an honor. 1 Peter 2 and 9 says, but you are a chosen generation. You've been selected as the best or most appropriate, y'all. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who's called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Chosen. Somebody say, I was chosen. Deuteronomy 7 and 6, for you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. Back then, those tribes were very important because you had heathen tribes and you had people that were having their babies and sacrificing them to Moloch and Baal. And then you had God's people who were trying to do what God said to do. And he forbid them to have anything to do with those other tribes. It wasn't races, y'all. It was a spiritual thing. If they're serving other gods, I mean, he didn't go for that. And like I said, they're killing their kids. It's just amazing some of the things that Baal worship did. And Moloch, they would have babies, newborn babies, and mom and dad would take them down there and the priest would sacrifice them and burn them. Whew. I seen a picture of a man outside of a abortion clinic the other day, and he actually got in the dumpster and was getting these babies out. And he had a mask on, and he, was, he had them laid out. I got a picture of it, but I can't show it to you because there's pieces of babies, y'all, and there's little, he wraps them up, he cleans them, and he gives them a burial. And it bothers him that bad. And, you know, they're going to catch him sooner or later and not let him do it. But he felt he just couldn't stand to see them little babies laying in that dumpster. He couldn't stand it. And we're doing that anyway. I just need you to understand that you got to find your place. You're chosen to do something. 1 Samuel 24 and 2. These were the greatest warriors he could find out of his army. 3,000. And went to seek David and his men were on the rocks of the wild goats. Man, David climbed cliffs and hid from these people. Because these were bad soldiers, man. These guys, these were 3,000 elite. It's like the SEAL teams after you. And they would hide. So sometimes it got rocky. 
but he was still chosen. Somebody say he was still chosen. Matthew 20, 16. So the last will be first, the first will be last. For many are called, but there's few that get chosen. Many of you get to call, but only a few get chosen. And I read this to you the other night. You're chosen in a furnace of affliction. What does that mean? That means when you go through trouble, that's when God really sees what you're made out of. When you go through heartache, when you go through trouble, are you one of those people saying, I'm just quitting. I just can't do this. I'm done. I can't do it. I ain't going back. Don't like church. Don't like Eddie. hate to hear him. He's too long-winded. <laughs> I mean, I don't bother me. I hate it for you. But you get to that place that you just don't want to do anything anymore. You just give up. That's where God finds out if you've got that staying power, if you have the, the, what it takes, the persistence to fight and to stand. When you've done all you can do to stand, just stand. Just stand there. God's going to deliver you. As a matter of fact, when it gets that hot in the kitchen, that's when something good's getting ready to happen. You're going to have to go through some lion dens, y'all. You're going to have to go through some fire. You're going to have to go through. The Bible says that think it not strange concerning the fiery trial that is to try you. But the whole time, God is setting you up to bless you. He's got your future in mind. If you miss those fiery trials and you miss those opportunities, God's taking you somewhere. What was the boy's name that his brother threw him in a hole? Jacob? That's what I said. <laughs> he threw him in a hole, y'all. Told his, told his daddy, took some animal blood and put on his clothes. And said, man, something got him, Dad. You know, I'm sorry, I hate it. Old man grieving over his baby. But he had a little attitude. He told his brothers that he seen them bowing down to him and stuff. And, you know, after a while, your brother's going to get tired of that, and they're going to mop you up. That's just the way you do it. You little conceited jerk. You know what I mean? So they threw him in a hole, told his dad he's dead. And then he got sold into slavery. Then he got accused of messing with a woman that he didn't mess with, wound up in prison. And then in prison, there was an opportunity came for him to walk and stand before Pharaoh. And God set it all up from the time that he was a boy all the way up to he was the ruler under Pharaoh, y'all. He was next in line. He was the vice president. Nobody had more authority than he did when it was done. So the whole time, God was setting him up. And if he's like me, I'd be like, God, what is up with this? I mean, I tithe and I give and I've helped people and I've prayed. And man, you got me in a hole. You got me in prison. That stinking woman accused me of something I didn't do. I mean, he went through it, y'all, but the whole time God was teaching him to be a leader and teaching him. And at the end, his family came back to him to buy corn because there was a severe famine and all of his brothers came back and they didn't recognize him. He done growed up and he had on his garb, whatever they wore back then, and he hid himself from them until the end time. Then he forgave them and everybody was happy. There was a reunion. Whee, everybody's happy. And, and it all worked out. But there's times you got to go through that hole and you got to go through that prison and you got to go through those false accusations and you got to hang on to God. Somebody say, hang on. You don't give up when things get rough, man, you sissy. What are you thinking? You can't do that. You're going to sell out God when things get rough? That's like getting married and going through some dry times and just throwing each other to the curb and say, I'm going to try something else. This ain't working. Marriage is commitment, y'all, forever. Somebody say Amen. So hang on through the hard times. Somebody say, God's got me. Give Jesus a big hand. So the first is going to be last, and the last first, for many are called, but few are chosen. Remember, I may have worked all day, and you may have worked just the last few hours, but we're going to get the same pay. That's what the Bible says. And then the people was fussing about it. Man, we've been here since daylight. And they came in about 3 o'clock, and you're going to pay them the same? And the guy said, didn't I tell you what I paid you when you started? I told you I'd give you $100. Don't worry about what I give them. It ain't none of your business. That's basically what he told him. I give you $100, you're going about your business. Ain't that what I told you? Yeah, but I could have come in at 3 o'clock and only worked three hours. But that's just the way God does it. There's going to be some people serve God for 30 years and walk into heaven, and there may be somebody got saved yesterday. They're going to sit in the same seat in the same table, glory to God. Ain't none of us no better than nobody else. Somebody say amen. amen. Matthew twenty-two fourteen. For many are called, it says this again, 
but few are chosen. Acts 22, 14. Acts 22, 14. Then he said, the God of our fathers has chosen you that you should know his will. Thank you, Jesus. And see the just one and hear the voice of his mouth. James 2. James 2. Listen, my beloved brethren. Has God not chosen <clears throat> the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him? God has chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith, faith and heirs of the kingdom. So God chooses some crazy people, y'all. You can look at the people that followed him around. They were goofy. I'd have never had none of them help me do ministry, I don't think. So you see your calling. Your calling, remember that you were called. Look at someone and say that. Did you get the call? Say, I got mine. But God has chosen foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. God has chosen weak things of the world to put to shame the things that are mighty. Base things, low things, y'all. Things which are despised, God chose that. Things which are not to bring to nothing things that are. God chooses dirt. God chooses the lowest of the low, man. And I look around this room, and, and I love y'all, but y'all know what I'm saying. I didn't deserve this. I would have never chose me to do nothing, but God saw something good in me, and he seen something good in you, and he said, that boy's going to do it one day. He's going to be stubborn. He's going to stand for me. And I thank God I'm honored, y'all. I can't say that enough. Of all the things that I've done in my life and all the places I've been and then signing those autographs and making those records and all the stuff that God has blessed me with, none of it. None of it means as much to me as standing up here and knowing that the creator of the universe has chosen me. I take that real serious. Somebody say amen. And I'm telling you that because he's chose you too. You're chosen. You got to stand when you don't feel like it. You got to fight when you ain't got nothing left. Glory to God. I watched uh, some videos the other day. I watch Ultimate Fighting sometimes. I admit it. You can watch your, yeah, you can watch your soap operas. I like Ultimate Fight. I like to watch people beat each other up. And uh, I was watching, and I was showing clips of endings that didn't work out like they thought it would. And this guy was beat senseless. And he was getting ready to tap. You know, he was getting ready. And this guy was just wearing him out, and he got overconfident. And this guy raised up and went, whap, knocked him out cold. And uh, he couldn't even stand up. The guy beat him so bad, but he still had that one punch. And I realize I've seen boxers lose 10 rounds on the scorecards. And in the 11th round, they knock somebody out. So that's the way a fight of faith is. You may feel like you got knocked down. You may feel like you ain't going to be able to win. But keep fighting, keep swinging, and keep standing. God's going to do something big, y'all. God's going to do something big. I wonder if Daniel thought when they throwed him in the den, he said, well, that's it. <clears throat> that's it you know I'm done I'm done God's gonna let me get out here and get eat by these by these kitty cats man so I'm gonna have to go down here and they threw him into the den of lions I don't know if they pitched him in if they got a ladder and said you walk down there and all them stinking cats are at the bottom going mm, here comes Daniel big pork chop coming down the ladder I don't know how it worked but he they threw him into it that would hurt because them dens had to be pretty deep for them things to climb out of there. You know what I'm saying? They threw him into it. And I thought about it all night long when he stayed down there. But when he got out, he was promoted. I've told you that. He was promoted above all the other wise men. And all those people that falsely accused him and all those people that set him up, them and their families, are forever at the bottom of the lion's pit. They threw them all in there. There was a man that tried to set up another guy, Mordecai. And he, he tried to set him up and tried to have him murdered. And he built a gallows 75 foot high. It looked impossible for Mordecai, y'all. This man had millions of dollars that he gave to the king to let him kill this man and all the other Jews. And in the end, when it was all done and said, they hung that man on his own gallows. This rich man that thought he had it all figured out. That's where, you need to read Esther. That was a good book. Esther went in and prayed and talked to the king, and the king realized what was going on. And in the end, Mordecai got blessed. I'm telling you that sometimes you got to go through it. You can't go up to it. you got to go through it. 
You can't come to the door and say, okay, Lord, I'm done. He said, no, go in. I don't want to go in, man. I hear, I hear lions growling. I hear crazy dogs and I hear goofy stuff. I don't want to go in there. God said, I want to go with you, son. Open the door and go. I got you back. Whew. Somebody say, I got you back. God has got you. And everything's going to be all right. So the balance of this message, i got to tell you this. Let me read you one more. The base things of the world, despised, God chose all that, that no flesh should glory in his presence. No flesh. That's 1 Corinthians 129. It's right before that. There it is. That's all right. We missed one. That's my fault. No flesh. There it is should glory in his presence. That means you can't brag on yourself because you got more education than I do. You can't brag on yourself, and I ain't, got, I ain't against education, and I ain't against you getting learning and learning how to do stuff, but in God's eyes, flesh can't glory in his presence. I told you God will take a, a heavy machine operator and have him teaching a knitting class. God will take somebody that plumb out their element and do something great in their life I told the Lord years ago I didn't want to do TV. I don't like TV. I don't like being on TV, and I sure don't want to do it. And he said, I need you to do it. And I've done it six and a half years, y'all, and I've done what God told me to do, and now we're doing this Internet ministry all over the world. This, this is going all over the world. And a lot of times there's only 40, 30, 40 people watching it, but the other day I looked, and there's over 3,500 hits on one so people are tuning in after it gets out there and gets passed around people are writing to us and uh, we're trying to just we just want to share the gospel I'm not trying to build anything not trying to send us your offering glory to God and God will hear you I'm not doing all that never done that but I do tell people God loves you and we're here to tell you about it so they tune in there's people now watching and I need to tell you that God chose us to do that and he's chose you to do something amen He's chose you to do some things too. Find out what that is. I started out doing the little things. Murray and I had to serve at a church and we served the pastor and we sang on praise teams. And um, I didn't mind that. I enjoyed it. And I submitted. The Lord told me to submit and I stayed five or six years here, five or six years there and the Lord would move us. And when I left, I tried not to leave mad, y'all. I just know it's time to go. When my season is over, I knew it was time. And I've seen people here do that. And we're still friends. Everything's still good. I ain't mad at nobody. It's just you got to find your place and you got to do what God tells you to do. Revelation 17, 14. These will make war with the Lamb and the Lamb will overcome them. For he is Lord of lords, King of kings, and those who are with him are called chosen and faithful. Glory to God. He is Lord of Lords, capital L, little L. King of Kings, capital K, little K. He is the king. He's the king of kings. Elvis might have been the king of rock and roll. And you hear what I'm saying? That's a little K. I'm sorry, y'all. I liked Elvis. But it was a little K. Little Lords. There's all kinds of people you can get. You can get these documents from certain places, and you can be called Lord. You can be called a gentleman. And they got other things. What's, what is it in Canada? Uh, sir, you can, you can get a document that makes you a sir any day. <laughs> a sir. I don't need all that, y'all. But to God, everybody's on the same level, man. The guy living in the box in the alley and the guy that's in the suit, they're going to stand before God naked. That means that none of that ain't going to matter. They can't glory. His, their flesh is not going to get them anywhere. It don't matter what you've accomplished. Haven't we built these things in your name, done all these great things in your name, haven't we cast out devils in your name? Those people had to know God to be able to do that. And he said, depart from me, I never knew you. That's heavy, y'all. That is heavy, what happened? They may have had it at one time, but somewhere they withered away and they got to doing their own thing. They, they may have got a little entitlement on them and felt like they were okay to take a little bit for themselves. And when you start doing that, you're gonna get called on it. God will absolutely, that's stealing. I don't care how you look at it. You're entitled. You've got to watch entitlement, y'all. It's real easy to feel like you're entitled to something because you work so hard, bless God, and because you've done. You've got to understand you're working for the king. And if God tells you something, then you can do it, but you've got to have accountability. And I've told people this. Years ago, a friend of mine signed a paper 
and signed himself away from the people that was watching his back. He got on his own. He started making appointments. And there's nothing wrong with that, but he just had no accountability. What that means is nobody's watching his back spiritually. And he got off and got off into some of the goofiest stuff and got messed up. And he ended up shooting his secretary in the head in his church. He shot her and killed her because he was having an affair with her. And he was married and he had children. And he shot this girl inside the church, y'all. And I had called him, I don't know how long before that. Murray, Murray may remember, but he was on my heart. And I called him. And I, I mean, he's a good man, y'all. He wasn't a bad man, but he got out from under the accountability. If I start getting stupid and doing something like that, I have people that's going to come and say, Eddie, man, I need to talk to you. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> David had a hair, I'm going to go ahead and get me one. <laughs> and that's exactly the way he thought. He really thought that. And there was things, he got all goofy. And you need the devil, they're seducing spirits out there, y'all, and they go after leadership. If they can get the leadership, where do you think all this church went and all those people? If they get the leader, if they take out the general, all the people just scatter. And that's what they do. That's what demons do. They're seducing spirits. And I seen it. And, I, and God didn't show me nothing that he had done, but I knew it. I told Murray when I got home, I heard him preach, and I said, he's messed up. She said, what do you mean? I said, there's just something wrong. He's messed up. I seen it. The secretary was with him that day, and she walked in, and I seen her, and I seen him. And, and I just, my mind was turning. And uh, I wasn't being suspicious. I just knew something wasn't right, y'all. I could sense it. And when I called him, he wouldn't talk to me. He said, would you and Murray come down and sing for us sometime? He said, i got to be in Dallas. And, uh, I mean, he's traveling, flying places and preaching. And, and I said, yeah, I'd love to, man. But I said, if you ever need to talk to me, anything, I won't tell nobody. I said, I'll come and meet you somewhere, and we can talk. I need you to know I love you, and I'm worried about you. I'm very worried about you. Oh, I'm good, man. Everything's all right. God's good, man. It wasn't all right. It wasn't no time after that. He killed her, went to prison. When he got out, he's gone now, y'all. I mean, he lived for a while and died a young man. And, and there's things happen. And I'm not saying that in a judgmental way. I loved him. But that's how the, it's very sobering to me. That, that keeps me sober. That keeps me focused on what the devil is doing to people out there. And so I got my wife watching my back. That's why I tell her everything. I tell her everything. I don't let nothing slip by. The Lord told me years ago, I told you this, said if you've got to hide it from Mary, what's wrong with that? <clears throat> if you can't tell her she's part of you, you and her are one, if you can't tell her, well, I said, I don't want to get her upset because I hug everybody, and I seen an old girlfriend at Walmart, and I just give her a hug. It ain't no big deal. Ain't, she don't have to know. God said, yes, she does. And I tell her. You can ask her. I've told her things she probably didn't want me to. But I feel protection there. I feel like God's got me, and I know she's got me. And there's no secrets. And also, I earned my trust back, y'all, because I busted it up over the years. And I lied to her so much, I had to earn that trust back for her to ever be able to love me again. So to me, there's safety in a multitude of counselors. I've got people sitting right here in this building that I could go to and tell them if I was having trouble. I could go to them and say, man, my eyes are wandering and, and I'm in trouble and I've made a couple of phone calls and man, I, I mean, I could go and tell them that and they wouldn't throw me away. They would help me and I would help you, same way. So you need that. Don't ever get too far from your help, y'all. Don't ever get to the place that you think you don't need anybody. There's all kinds of preachers in this area right now that got out from under their covering, that can't worship with nobody, that got their own gig going. And it's bitterness and it's jealousy and there's this ugly stuff in them. And I told you, I've told them. Not because I'm mean, not because I think I know everything. I want to help them. I've had bitterness in me. And I've had jealousy. And I dealt with it. And I confessed to it. And I asked God to help me with it. Thank God. Thank God, y'all. That's why God's blessed us. That's why God is still helping us and doing things for us. Somebody say, just be straight with you. I'm going to put it in a big... Four-letter word right here, real. Be real with God. Be real with people. We got enough people blowing smoke in our face, amen? We got enough people telling us what we want to hear. I want somebody to be straight with me. Be real with me, glory to God. Just tell me if you've had a bad day. It's okay. You can tell me that you 
that you're tempted. You can tell me that you messed up. You can tell me you fell down. Let me help you up, brother. I fell down in my life too. Glory to God, we gotta get real and quit playing phony church with people and quit being plastic. Glory to God, we gotta be straight up and just tell it. Amen. My wife put something on the internet the other day. It touched my heart. And she was, she was bragging on me. And I don't ever ask her to do that, but it touched my heart. But she said, what you see is what you get. Eddie's just exactly the way he is. And I said, thank you. That's the best compliment that somebody could give me is he's straight up, he's real. He ain't no phony about him. What you see is what you get. Glory to God. Amen. Give Jesus a hand. <clears throat> Two more scriptures, please. Luke twenty two twenty four. Now there was also a dispute among them as to which of them should be considered the greatest. This is the disciples, y'all. <laughs> so they're walking around, Jesus, yeah. Sometimes they'd walk like from here to Taswell or here to Oakville. You know, and they would go across these places and they had to camp out, I'm sure, and sleep out under the stars. And uh, they probably had a campfire and they probably had an old dog wandering into the camp. And I seen Jesus scratching his belly and talking to the disciples and telling, teaching. He was just real, man. And they talked to each other and they helped each other. And here's the disciples sitting around saying, Jesus loves me more than he does you. Yeah. Who's the greatest? I guarantee you Jesus would do more for me than he would you. Jesus had to get apart and pray for a few minutes because they're all driving him nuts. <laughs> I know they was. He's like, hey, Father, please do something with this crazy bunch of people. So Jesus comes back, and they're arguing about who's coolest and who's the greatest. <laughs> I can see Jesus like, man, you, you all, what's wrong with you? And he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. And those who exercise authority over them are called benefactors, but not so among you. On the contrary, he who is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. And he who governs or rules as he who serves. For who is greater, he who sits at the table or he who serves? Is it not he who sits at the table? Yet I am among you as the one who serves. Let the greatest among you become your servants, y'all. In God's eyes, you want to be big, you need to be serving somebody. In his eyes, that's just the way it is. When you get to be a pastor, it ain't that you get to wear the nice robes. Some people do. That's y'all's business. But I don't do robes, but that's okay. Amen. Don't get me one. I won't wear it. And uh, <laughs> I can't do it, man. Get me a headband. I'll wear that for you. And... Uh, it's, it's not, you need to understand when you get called to do something like that, you're going to serve people. Your phone's going to ring at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. It happens all the time. You're going to have to go visit people. You're going to have to help people. I, I had couples here that are having a lot of trouble, man, and uh, I'm trying to referee, you know. Don't want to pick sides, but if somebody's wrong, i got to tell them they're wrong because I love them. Amen. And a pastor, the Bible says if I fail to warn the wicked in his wicked way, that his blood will be required at my hand. God is going to call me guilty if I fail to tell somebody. And that's tough, y'all, but I can do it. They don't always like it, but I can do it. And I, I, I've held people. I said, please look at me. You know I love you. Tears run down my face. I love you. I want to help you. But you're wrong. Your attitude ain't right. You shouldn't have said that. You're wrong. And a lot of times they receive it, and a lot of times they get mad. But you still got to tell them. It's important that you have somebody love you enough to tell you the truth, y'all. Would you say that with me? It's important that you have someone who loves you enough to tell you the truth. Sabrina came up to me one night years ago, and y'all have heard this and heard it, but somebody might not have. But I had some boys steal from me. And I, I got a bitterness in me, man. I was going to go catch them boys out and I was going to wear them out. I was mad. They come in our, my woods and stole all my daddy's ginseng that he had planted. And I found out who done it. And I called them and I told them, I said, boys, I'm going to, I'm going to see you somewhere. I'm going to and some of them were people that I had loved and took in. And, and I had that on me. It was on me. Somebody says it's on you. 
And it was messing with me. Yeah, I done got a little bitter. I done got a little, I wanted some revenge, man. And I done figured out what I was going to do, and I was chewing on it. And I was halfway rebuking it, saying, I know God don't want me to do that. But then lash meat would take over, and, and uh, Eddie's stupid flesh would take over. That's why I know flesh can glory in his presence. But Sabrina came to me, and she said, Eddie, God told me to tell you to lay down right there on the floor. Remember that, dear? And she said, I went, looked at her. And she said, I know you don't like it, Eddie, but I heard God. I went, man, I didn't want to do it. I said, all right, all right. As soon as my back touched that floor, I started crying, weeping, crying, and they prayed for me. Sometimes you got to get down. Sometimes you got to humble yourself. Sometimes you got to come down off your high horse and let God minister to you, glory to God. Somebody say amen. amen. You can't get to the place that you think you know everything. Glory to God. What was that? Bobby, did you check for me? Mike, thank you. So the Lord's trying to teach us to humble ourselves. There was a place where Naaman had leprosy and he was a great man. He was an important man. He was a leader. And they told him to go down to the creek and dip seven times. It was a nasty creek. Be like me telling you go to Matoka and dip in that creek. I'm sorry, but I'm from over there. And uh, that creek, you can sit and watch the brown trout float right down there. And uh, it's pretty bad. Toilet paper. I'm sorry, but it's truth. And uh, there's other creeks like that too. I'm not just bad mouth of Matoka because I'm from there and I love them. But I'm just telling you, he had to go to a dirty creek. And he said, ain't our rivers far greater than Jordan? I don't want to dip in Jordan. That nasty. It's nasty, man. They dump their dishwater in our stuff, man. There's, yeah, it's shallow and there's milk jugs and baby diapers hung in the limbs. He didn't say all that, that's me. But he said, our rivers are better. I want to dip. And he's, he got mad and he wouldn't do it. He went away in a rage, it said, with leprosy. And these people let him calm down and they said, look, we love you, I ain't getting in your business. But if he asked you to do some great thing, wouldn't you have done it? How much easier is it just to go down and dip seven times? And I guess he calmed down and thought about it. So we went down and he dipped seven times in Jordan and his skin became as a child's skin. The leprosy left instantly and he was healed of leprosy, which was incurable, y'all. And he went back to the man of God and thanked him. I want to tell you, there's times that you got to go down. And that's what it said. Naaman went down. And that means he had to walk down a bank or whatever, but sometimes we just need to get down. And we need to humble ourselves. So laying in the floor, God delivered me. Another brother was standing there and he said, Eddie, I see a black cat sitting on your chest and it's got revenge wrote on it. They had no idea what I was plotting. Sometimes your flesh will get you in trouble, y'all. Sometimes it will get you all boogered up. We gotta stay close to God and I need people that will tell me the truth. And I know most of y'all would. And I would you. Because I love you. I went to people in here, y'all, this last year. And I said, I love you, but you're wrong. Took them to their self. I said, I love you, and you're wrong. Let me, let me help you. Let me tell you what to do. Because I've done it. And they got mad at me, and they left. And uh, there's nothing I can do. And if I had to do over y'all, I'd say exactly what I said. It's just the way it is. Some people cannot take reproof. And the Bible says that reproof enters more into a wise man than a hundred stripes into a fool. If you're wise, you'll let somebody counsel you. If you're wise, you'll let somebody talk to you. Not in front of everybody to make a big scene and embarrass you. But if I get you to yourself and I say, man, I've seen something and you need to listen to me, you can do that to me too. Amen? I, I need you to. And uh, we'll do the best we can with that. If you think your brother has an ought against you, go to him alone and talk to him. Give Jesus a big hand. I had to give you this tonight because you're chosen. Many of you are called and chosen of God. And there's going to be some rough times. It's all training. It's all things that God needs you to do. Josh and I started doing a workout every day, me and him together. And uh, we bought us a punching dummy. How many of y'all ever seen one? It's on a, you got to pour, pour water in the bottom of it to keep it from moving. We beat that thing up, man. And the uh, other night, my son stayed at the house, and we call him Bob. If you order it, it's called Bob XL. 
and he's uh, he's full torso, and we got him with gym shorts on so we can beat him all over. And uh, the other ones are about down to here, but we got one of the longer ones so we can really tear him up and beat him. And so we're beating on Bob. And my son came and stayed all night, Ronnie. I said, uh, Bob messed with you in there on that stand. Looks like some, when you look through there, it looks like somebody's standing there and you kind of startles you. And he said, I'm taking Bob off. And Ronnie took Bob and put his face against the wall and set him down over there. It comes off real easy. I snuck in there that night <laughs> and I turned Bob away from the wall. <laughs> and I, Ronnie, I know Ronnie probably knows I've done it. And then later on, Ronnie got up, went outside for a minute, and come back in and went back to bed. And I snuck in there and I took Bob and put him right beside his bed. <laughs> so when he rolled over, he's looking. At, Bob's got this look. He's real intense, man. He just looks at you. We gouge his eyes and we throat punch him. We do all kinds of crazy stuff to him. But together, me and him's doing that. And it, I need it, and he needs it. Fireworks. Thanks, Bobby. That's okay. Thank you. Would you bow your head with me? Father, I love you and I praise you and I thank you for this word. We're called and chosen to do something for you. Let everybody here realize it. Let them be honored to work for you. You said, Lord, in your, in your word, you said, how can you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things that I've called you to do? How can you truly call me Lord if you ain't going to listen? And I just ask you that we always listen, that we never tell you no that we come to you like we would be coming before the king and kneel down and say, oh God, what would you have me do? What would you have me do? I praise you, Lord, and I thank you for your sweet spirit and your anointing. Get us through these messes, God, that we're all going through. Get us through these hard times, these lined dens, these fires. You're walking with us, Lord. You're there with us. You got our back. We love you and praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. Give Jesus a big hand. This altar is always open. If you need to be saved, if you need prayer, if you need us to agree with you on everything, I want to tell you this before we go any further. This coming Sunday, the church won't be open. This coming Sunday, we're going to take a break. So the church won't be open Sunday. Please let everybody know. Just call everybody. We'll be back Thursday night, as usual. Everything's good. We need a break, and uh, I'm going out of town, and uh, Murray needs a break. So we're going to take one. So thank you all for everything. We love you and appreciate you. Nothing's wrong. <laughs> Somebody wrote today and said, y'all all right? I said, we're fine. Everything's good. Just, we got some things to do. So, amen. But we'll be back next Thursday night, okay? If you need prayer, come on. Eric, thank you. Start some music, please. Bless you all. Holly Ray, prayer for infection. Diabetes. Rhonda Thornhill. Lost husband yesterday to cancer. Jesus. I pray for Rhonda, God, and I ask you to hold her. I ask you to hold her close to you, Lord. Pull her up against your chest and let her cry. And I ask you to help Rhonda get through this situation. I speak healing over Holly Ray for the infection and the diabetes. I ask you for a miracle in her life. I praise you, Lord, that we can pray and things will happen. In Jesus' mighty name, we send your angels and your power to Holly and Deronda, and we thank you for miracles. And somebody say amen. God bless you all.